What is your take on Clarida's early resignation? I wasn't really a surprise that he would be he would be stepping down. Um, I mean, obviously we we have the confirmation hearings this week for uh, Chair Powell and Vice Chair to be Reinhardt. So no surprise here, in my view. Well, Jan, uh, presumably then you don't really feel as if the, the composition of the committee is, uh, is going to be changed in any real way. You, you see uh, the Fed likely to be uh, hiking rates four times this year, as well as uh, allowing the balance sheet to shrink. What's gone on uh, in the last couple of months to, to, to kind of get you to that place? Is it mostly just the change in rhetoric from the Fed? Is it parts of uh, what we're seeing in the data or, or something else? The data have been supportive of moving towards tightening, but what's changed more recently was that the minutes last week basically said they're more comfortable starting the balance sheet runoff earlier than we had expected. We previously thought that we would get a hike in March, hike in June, hike in September, and then they would start the balance sheet runoff in December, and that would substitute for a rate hike. Now it seems like that's going to happen earlier. We think July is probably the start of the balance sheet runoff. And in July, I don't think it's that good a forecast to expect it to substitute for, for a hike, because inflation is still going to be quite high. Uh, you know, we think still close to 4% for core PC inflation. And so... I think in that, with that kind of runoff call, it's more natural to have four hikes, uh, including a hike in December as well, and, and, and really every, every quarter. Well, Jan, Jamie Dimon, CEO of J.P. Morgan, agrees with you. He was on CNBC earlier today during an interview. Here's what he said about how many times the Fed will raise rates. A lot of people project inflation to be 2.3 percent at the end of this year. I don't. I think it's going to be higher. But, you know, if we're lucky, the Fed will slow things down and we'll have what they call a soft landing, you know, and it's going to be a little bit like threading a needle. So you can't look at anything and say, that's my projection, because you really don't know. It's possible that inflation is worse than they think, that the raise rates more than people think. I'd personally be surprised if it's just four increases next year. I, you know, I, I think that four increases 25 basis points is a very, very little amount and very easy for the economy to absorb. He thinks they'll go further, Jan. It would be surprised if it's only four hikes. What are the chances that the Fed can engineer a soft landing? That is, keep the economic recovery going while raising interest rates several times this year. So I think it's certainly possible that, they, that it would be more. I think four is a, is a reasonable baseline expectation. But there is, of course, risk in both directions around that. The area where we're actually further away from market pricing is in terms of where the funds rate ultimately goes, the market only has that going to about 1.6% or so. And we think it's going to be uh, 100 basis points more than that. The market is priced for a very low ultimate terminal funds rate. And you know we, th we think too low. So that's where the surprises relative to, to current market pricing are going to be larger in our view. What's the chance that they can pull off a soft landing? I mean, we do have the economy still expanding in 2023, 2024. So it's a soft landing in that sense. We do expect slower growth, uh, much slower growth in, in subsequent years because we're bumping up against capacity constraints. And, and so that's why there does need to be, you know, I think monetary policy normalization.